all right guys in this video we are gonna take a look at the stock to flow ratio which is an important ratio when we talk about for example bitcoin gold or other very scarce commodities so we're gonna take a look at what the ratio is and look at a few examples as well as why it is important so yeah guys without further ado let's jump right into the video Alright, I think we can actually start here by taking a look at the formula. So the stock to flow formula here, we can for short call it SF, is, you can hear on the name, we have the stock of the commodity, which is basically the total available amounts. And then we divide the stock here by the flow. And the flow is basically the yearly production. So this right here is basically the stock to flow ratio formula. And what does it mean? Well, this formula compares the current stock, so how much we already have, and we compare that amount by the inflow of yearly production. So how much more of this commodity that we produce every year. We can think of it as, we can think of it as how many years of production it takes to produce the existing stockpiles slash reserves. This looks kind of like a U, but it says reserves here. So the higher the stock to flow ratio means that the commodity is increasingly scarce, while a lower stock to flow means that it is less scarce, less rare. So now when we know a tiny bit about the stock to flow ratio, now let's take a look at some examples to get this a bit more clear. All right, so, uh, all right, so here we have a graph with the stock to flow ratio for gold, silver, and some other well-known uh, commodities. What we can notice here is that gold is the clear winner here. It has the highest stock to flow ratio, the highest total available amount, compared to its yearly inflow of new gold. So we can actually take a look at the stock to flow for gold. So stock to flow, gold. We can write with yellow, so it's it looks like gold. Uh, so I think these are figures for from uh, 2019. So I can write stock divided by flow. In 2019, the stock was 185,000 uh, tons, and the yearly inflow was about 3,000. So the stock to flow, this is basically the same thing as 185 divided by three, equal to around equal to 62. So as we can see on the graph here, it looks to be a, a bit higher, but it's around 62 here. And what does this mean? And what this means is that if we assume that the same flow, that we will get 3000 tons of gold annually, it would take 62 years to, to double the gold supply. So as we can see, gold is a very scarce metal. We can see that silver here, looks to be closer to 20. So if we assume that we have the same annual production of silver, it would take around 20 years to, to produce the total available amount. And another way to look at this, uh, what we sometimes do is that we, instead of looking at stock to flow, we can compare the flow to the stock. And for gold, this would be 3,000 divided by 185,000, which is around equal to 1.6%. Uh, so we can think of this as that the stock increases by around 1.6% every year. So if we would imagine that the miners, for some reason, maybe the demand is much higher, so the suppliers want to produce much, much more gold. So let's assume that the flow doubles, even though this is very unlikely. Let's assume that the flow doubles. So we have the flow times two, 
divided by the stock. This would give us 6,000 divided by 185,000 equal to around 3.2%. So as you can see here, if we double the inflow of gold, the amount of gold would still only increase annually by 3.2%. So because gold has such a large available stock, an increase in the flow will not make the current stock increase a lot in percent and therefore the price of gold is not so much affected by an increase in production. But now let's take a look at another metal. Let's take a look at, for example, platinum. So the stock to flow for platinum was 2009. We had a stock of 86 and an inflow, a flow of 229. So as you can see here, here we have a much, much, much lower stock to flow ratio. This is equal to around 0.4. So you can think of this as it would only take 0.4 years to produce the amount of platinum we have available right now. So this is a very low stock to flow ratio. And for, let's do the same ana analysis we did with gold. Let's compare the flow to the stock. So 229 divided by 86. We can here see that the flow to stock, so the yearly inflow of uh, platinum is, is very, very high. It's actually 226%. So what would happen with the platinum if we double the flow? Well, then we would have the flow times two divided by the stock here. This would give us 458 divided by 86, which is around equal to 532%. So as you can see here, when it comes to platinum, if we double the annual supply, if we double the flow, this would make a huge impact on the supply. If we would have a flow to stock of 500% instead of 260%, this would of course affect the prices in a much more dramatic fashion than, than for example gold which, ha which has a very large stock to flow. So when we increase the supply of platinum a lot that would affect the prices much more than what doubling the flow would affect the gold prices. Uh, now let's actually take a look at another chart here and talk a bit about Bitcoin. So one very interesting application of the stock to flow ratio is when it comes to Bitcoin the original cryptocurrency or what some people call it digital gold. And as we can see here, 2010, Bitcoin had a stock to flow of 8.68. And then four years later, it has a much larger stock to flow. And 2020, where we are now, after the halving, it has a stock to flow ratio of 55.92. So as you can see, the stock to flow for Bitcoin only gets larger and larger. You can see here that by the year of 2025, the stock to flow of Bitcoin is 121. And that is actually pretty much double the stock to flow of gold. So how is this possible? Well, this property is possible because of the Bitcoin halvings. So if we look at the stock to flow here, let's say that this is that one here is before the halving and two here is after the halving. What happens on the so-called halvings is that the flow gets divided by two. So let's take our attention to two here. What happens on the so-called halvings is that the inflow of Bitcoin, the annual production of Bitcoin or the mining of Bitcoin gets cut in half. So let's say that we cut the flow here in half. What happens to the stock to flow, assuming that the stock is around the same? Well, we can simplify this expression as, you can think of it as stock divided by one. That's the same thing as this. And then we have it divided by flow divided by two. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going, going to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by two. So we multiply by two here and by two here. And this we can always do when it comes to fractions. As long as we do the same thing on the top and the bottom, we can always do it. So here, 
this two and this two take each other out. And let's continue down here. All we have left is stock times two divided by the flow. So what happens in halvings is that the stock to flow ratio pretty much doubles. All right guys, I think that's pretty much it for this short video. I really hope you got some value out of it. And if you did, a like would really help. And if you want to see more videos such as this one, for example, more Bitcoin videos or more, yeah, more similar videos, please don't hesitate to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And also please drop a comment down below and tell me what you want me to do next. But yeah, guys, I hope you have an awesome day and uh, I will catch you hopefully in the next video. For now, take care. Ciao, ciao.